What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hiltz, and today we're going to talk about support roles. Now, this is a continuation of this theme, getting back into dust, that we started. I started last time. Um, and you'll notice here that I'm testing out the input, I'm seeing how smooth it is. I've made some adjustments, and I wanted to get a feel for how it was changing the input. So I run some figure eights, run some straight lines back and forth. This is all a technique that you can use when you make adjustments or if you're still trying to adjust or adapt to a particular input style of a game. So we're going to be playing Domination today. This is my second game coming back into Dust. I'm playing with a buddy named More Kitty, and we are going to try to tear it up. Now, I'm playing a support role, so uh, my primary job is to support him, support the rest of my team, and I'm going to do that three ways. Two ways through my equipment slots, and one way through the tactics that I apply. Now I've chosen to use a scout logi, so I'm in an Amar advanced frame and I'm running a standard scrambler rifle with a advanced nanite injector and an advanced repair tool. Now the scrambler rifle was very intentional. Uh, I didn't want to use my typical combat rifle because the likelihood of running out of ammo was pretty high and I don't have the means of resupplying myself or my teammates. So the scrambler rifle is a great pick for the scout logi role if you're going to go repair and revive. So it also is great to, for the support role of uh, like additional DPS. And that's the role I try to play no matter what logi um, I'm, I'm playing is to not to be the type of logi that just permanently locks on with a repair tool on somebody and plays that style. Now, that's, it's a perfectly legitimate way of playing Logi, but the, this is the way I look at it. Scout Logi brings, can bring four things to the battlefield. The two equipment slots, whatever you f choose to fill those with, your um, advanced scanning capabilities, and your DPS if you choose to apply it. Now, I'm not trying to be the Slayer, but when the situation calls for it, I want to apply my DPS to the fight, and that's going to support the team. So those are the four roles I'm trying to fill. Provide my team with situational awareness, revive them when they're down, repair them when they're damaged, and provide them with additional DPS as appropriate. So I'm kind of playing, once again, I'm still struggling with my aim. You'll notice here that I'm missing a lot of shots. And, but, you know, that's okay. I recognize that, so support role is where I'm going. Now I'm not sticking exactly with my team. I, I kind of feel like uh, I can play a little bit better role here if I stick to the sides, kind of be a flanker in that sense, because most of my team is behind that point. They don't really need me to be over there. Now people start dying and somebody's hacking here, so I choose to go over so I can start reviving people. Now when you're playing the revive logi, it's very important to be aware of the fight. So You'll notice that I kind of waited until all was clear. It doesn't do that person who's lying on the ground any good to try to revive them while the firefight is going on. Um, I'm running an advanced repair tool. I know they're only going to come up with 50% armor, but if they don't have a lot of armor to begin with, that can basically just mean another easy kill for the enemy. And this is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty common uh, tactics in the game, but for me, it really boils down to the training I received in the army. You know, if you're in a firefight and you're wounded, your primary responsibility is to return fire and, and you know, self-medicate, so to speak, to, to get yourself back into the fight. Now, if you can't or if, if you're, somebody is down, you don't go rushing out after them while the fight is going. You continue that fight because if you get wounded, if you get injured, you're not doing them a favor. You have a limited amount of resources, and for every injured person, the amount of care that can be provided to any one person decreases. So be very aware when you're playing a revive logi. Don't just run out there and try to grab those points. Get into the fight, ease the DPS off your teammates, and then go for that revive if you can. And it's not the end of the world if you can't get that revive in. Uh, because bringing them back into a situation where they're just going to die again, and you're going to die, isn't going to do your team any good. So you'll notice here that uh, I'm switching back and forth between shooting, playing that DPS role, and playing the repair role. So as my, I see my teammates start taking damage, uh, I switch to the repair role to get them back up and back into the fight. 
Now, if I was running a Logi suit, then I wouldn't be able to provide my teammates, well, specifically my squad mate, with any sort of intel on the enemy's positions, but I would be able to provide my teammates with resupply. Or, alternatively, I could switch it out with uplinks, which we are sorely lacking this match. Uh, and that is something that I should have considered doing, but I didn't have uh, an uplink suit made at the time, and I would have it really would have taken me out of the fight to, to create that suit, so I didn't. I just kept playing this particular set of roles. But being able to adapt to the, the roles as necessary is really important. So right here you can see that I'm I recognize I'm recognizing that the enemy is being really good about their uplink placement, and in domination, uplink placement is everything. Generally speaking, the team that has more uplinks and better place uplinks is going to win the match. So I'm using my scanning capabilities here to hunt down the enemy's uplinks and to destroy them, to re remove their capability of respawning. Um, that is one of the benefits of a scout logi is you have that sort of advanced awareness and you're able to support your team by clearing out enemy equipment. So this Heavy and I have uh, engaged the enemy here and I decide to support him at this point as he kind of rushes into the enemy nest. Um, and I switch it out when I recognize that I need to do DPS. So to play the, su the support role well, where it just requires a great deal of situational awareness. Now, I recognized there that I was in a pretty sticky situation. My teammates were dropping all around me, tried to get away, and it just didn't work. Um, but you see, we're in a, in a pretty bad situation here. The enemy's got a lot of uplinks. We have none. Everybody who just died has to start by coming back in on those really far away points. It gives the enemy a lot of time to reposition, resupply, and be ready for our push. So, at, you know, at this point, if I had had an uplink suit ready to go, I would have brought it in, but I didn't. And that's kind of where you saw me hesitating, um, checking out the map as I was kind of running through those fits on the side and like, is this one an uplink? And I just recognized, no, I don't have one currently. I need to make one. So we're pushing back in. The enemy has hacked the point, although it's taken them longer than, than I would have expected. And we're going to try to make this push in. Now, it's not a great situation to be in when your teammate, when your team, a large portion of your team goes down in a really precarious situation because the enemy is able to mass their forces while you tend to come in scattered. So I heard the shotgunner right there, jumped out of the way, and uh, we're just, you know, so many people are coming in. I'm going to try to get some of my teammates up because we need, we just need more firepower here. So I've switched to the repair role. I see my teammates need some support in that manner. Going to get them full up. And then I... I'm going to come back and uh, switch to the weapon again. Now I'm going to switch to that DPS role. So as you play Logi, like I say, you're, you can choose how you want to play, but I highly recommend that you switch roles as necessary. Revive when it's appropriate, repair when it's appropriate. Use your scanning or your nano hive or your uplinks when appropriate. Switch to DPS because you're generally generally speaking as a logi you you don't have the most dps on the field and you don't have the greatest um, ehp so you're kind of squishy and if you run around with that leash the repair tool just constantly locked on to your teammates you're broadcasting to the enemy hey kill me and that's exactly what you're saying is kill me kill me i am the support role i'm an easy target and so I try not to do that. I don't want to broadcast that I'm a Logi because it makes me a target. So my team's trying to make the push, but we just, the enemy's doing a great job with grenades. They're just coming out of everywhere. And um, they've really defeated our push. And uh, it was a very well, um, they used their grenades very well. And, and we, we just clustered up. It was, we were very easy to take down. We didn't spread out enough. Now we're in a little bit better position here. We've got the CRU, we've got an uplink, but this is a difficult CRU to come in on. There are a lot of zones of fire that you have to deal with. You've got these stairs over here and the supply depot. You could potentially have them shooting from the gate. 
you've got this area over here to the left where there's that other set of stairs leading up to the this point so and there's not a lot of cover now here I noticed that I had a teammate who was playing the revive role and uh, using a what we could call a dirty needle you know basic needle bringing people back with 25 so I've switched to the repair tool because I have a feeling he's just gonna be going in for that revive and not really paying much attention to if it's the best time to revive and my teammates are going to need my repair capabilities so like right once again right there I'm just seeing okay I've got to repair gotta get my teammates back into the fight and the enemy is doing a great job they've switched out see he just ran into that right there didn't check didn't wait to see if it was a good time just ran in now he's dead and um, and there's pretty much nothing we can do and the enemy is doing a great job of using suppression based weaponry to keep us pinned in this corner We've got to move, but we can't because if we move out, then we, we take direct fire. So the combination of suppression from both direct fire and indirect fire there really won the enemy that con that fight. And um, so rather than come in on that point again, I recognize that it's just a bad situation. I'm going to kind of swallow some pride, go back to a point that's further away, and then come back in and try to flank the enemy, try to reestablish our uh, push. And once again, I was thinking to myself right here, I need to have that uplink suit because this is the perfect time to deploy it. We need to get uplinks in other parts of the city, give us more ways of coming in because we're coming in kind of scattered. We're, we're not able to really mass our effects. And when we are, we're pinned in that corner and we're not able to really apply that without just getting eaten by the, the better entrenched positions of the enemy. Now, I was actually quite amused with this conflict. Two assault shotgunners face off in the night. One of them walks away. Um, so at this point, uh, I've decided instead of trying to flank the enemy directly, I'm going to clear out their uplinks. Uh, one of the things that I had noticed was, you know, very early in this match, the enemy was doing a great job running their uplinks, getting those close points to respawn, and we were really struggling. So I'm avoiding conflict here to go look for those uplinks and to try to remove the enemy's ability to respawn and to get back into the fight. So this is a way that I'm supporting my team indirectly. And I'm using my advanced sensing um, capabilities as a scout to, to be able to hunt down these uplinks and to take care of them. Now, th one of the things I did pretty early on as a, in Dust as I was trying to uh, you know adjust to my to the, the controls was I actually used equipment, enemy equipment, as an opportunity to test my aim and and uh, deal with. So I overheat here, and then I'm like, ah, oh, crap, this isn't going to go too well. Didn't realize I was almost out of ammo for my secondary, and fortunately, I was just able to get the last final shot off before dying. So I'm looking for uplinks over here. I know that guy came from somewhere. And I'm pretty sure they, they have some on top of this tower here. But this is how you, you can support your team indirectly by doing things like this. And in the meantime, you know, you can practice your aim by coming up on those pieces of equipment and treating it as an opportunity to try to, to, to practice getting on target as quickly as possible. It's, you know, I know it's kind of silly, but it's one way to practice without having to deal with the... Um, the, the challenge of a moving target it just gives you a sense for how quickly you're getting on target and, um, and you know helping you adjust your settings from there so it's it's a different way of playing su support but like I was saying earlier you really just have to identify what's the best thing to do for the situation I have four different ways that I can provide support to my team and using my advanced scanning capabilities to hunt down the enemy's uplinks is just one of many so even though there's enemy here, I'm trying to not engage them, um, trying to keep my presence unknown. And so, like I said, right there, um, you know, it's just about switching it up. And I, I recognize that I've got a heavy here. This guy's been pretty good. And so I want to support him, trying to get him back up. Uh, I know we're kind of getting surrounded by the enemy here. But at this point, we've cleared out their uplink capabilities, So, and there's just at least three of us on this point. So if we can clear them out, we might be able to reestablish ourselves. 
Now, I used my last grenade there, and, you know, I recognize that it was, I probably threw it in the wrong direction. I saw this guy come on up over here. Uh, he laid down his uplink, and, um, and he's going to lay down another one here in a second. And uh, so I'm kind of stuck in this back corner, but right about here is when I noticed that we're, we're beating them in clones. So even though we've lost the point, it's very likely that we could beat them in the clones. So that's going to kind of change how um, I approach the situation a little bit. So once again, in review, if you're really struggling to fulfill the Slayer role, there are a lot of other things that you can do. Being logistics or scout logistics is um, gives you many more opportunities. So I just saw there that there was somebody up on that tower. I'm going to try to come in back here and um, take out that uplink by getting a dropship. So just be aware that your equipment gives you extra roles, but you can always fulfill roles based on the uh, capabilities of your suit. And the best way to play Logi in my estimation is to switch out those roles based on the needs of your team. Don't don't always be that Logi that's locked on to a heavy and just follow them around. Do that when it's uh, when it's pertinent. When there's a lot of enemy past a doorway and that heavy is going to push around the doorway. That's when they need your repair capabilities more than they need your DPS. Because if you walk around that corner and you don't have as many hit points as them, you could just be melted uh, instantly. So um, that's definitely the best way uh, to approach being that support role. And it can help you play um, your play to have your playtime be less frustrating. Um, so here I end up doing pretty well for myself, considering the fact that, you know, I've been struggling. Uh, want to give a shout out. Thanks to more kitty for, um, helping me out for this video. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the sandbox.